Let's talk about triangles, perimeter, and area. You'll see triangles a lot in the way that art is composed. And you'll also see triangles a lot in architecture. Now in architecture, you'll see triangles because they're a stable structure. And you may recognize the bridge on the left is the Eads Bridge, and on the right, that's the Climatron that's at the Missouri Botanical Gardens. When we're naming triangles, we can name them by the angles that they have. For example, this is an acute triangle because all of the angles are acute. This is a right triangle because it contains one right angle. And this is an obtuse triangle because it contains one obtuse angle. We could also choose to name triangles by their sides. This is an isosceles triangle because it has at least two congruent sides. This is a scalene triangle because it has no congruent sides. And this is an equilateral triangle because all three sides are congruent. Now that also means that we can give both an angle name and a side name to a triangle. So we could say that something is an acute isosceles triangle or it's an obtuse scalene triangle. When we look at two-dimensional objects, we can talk about the area that that object occupies. Now if we measure something in one dimension, that means we're measuring length. So we might say that this line segment is three inches long. But if we measure something that is two-dimensional, we can measure the space inside of it, and that would be the area. So in this case, we have a rectangle that measures three inches by two inches, and we can say that the area inside this rectangle is six square inches. Now we literally can see that there are six squares that occupy the interior of the rectangle, so it's pretty easy to see why the rectangle has an area of six square inches. When we look at triangles, it gets a little trickier. Because if we take a look at the space that's occupied by the interior of a triangle, we'll find that we don't just have perfect squares that are filled up by that space. There's parts of squares as well. So one thing that we could do to figure out the area of this triangle is to say, let's take this same triangle and duplicate it. Now we have two of the triangles and let's reposition this duplicate so that it is right against the original triangle. And now we can see that the original triangle, the blue one, and the duplicate, the purple one, are taking up six square units of area. Well, that's because we have a rectangle now. But remember, the triangle, the blue one, was what we were looking for the area of, and that is really half of the rectangle. So the area of the triangle is half of the area of the rectangle, which is one half of the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. And that's really how we get a formula for area of a triangle. If we look at the area of this triangle, its base measures three units and its height measures two units. So the area of this triangle is one half times the base times the height. Now take a look at this triangle. It has a base of four units and a height of three units. It's important to notice that the base and the height are always at right angles to each other. They're always perpendicular. So the area of this triangle would be one half times four times three, or six square units. Now the base and the height have to always be at right angles to each other. So let's suppose that we take this triangle and instead of making it a right triangle, we make it an acute triangle. The base is still four units and the height is still three units. So this triangle still has an area of 12 divided by two or six square units. In fact, we can move that vertex 
even further to the left and we still have a triangle that has an area of six square units. Now watch what happens when we move that vertex even further to the left and we make an obtuse triangle. The height of the triangle is still three units, but the height is actually falling outside of the triangle. So the area of this triangle is still six square units. It's one half times four, which is still the base, times three. So whether we have an obtuse triangle or a right triangle or an acute triangle, we still have a triangle that has an area of six square units. Now you probably remember the Pythagorean theorem. It relates the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. C is the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle, which is the side opposite the right angle, and A and B are the lengths of the legs. Now knowing that, we can find the length of any side in a right triangle if we know the lengths of two other sides. So in this case, if we wanted to find the value of x, which is the hypotenuse, knowing that the legs measure three units and four units, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that the value of x is five units. Now if you know the lengths of all three sides of a, of a triangle, you can also find its perimeter. The perimeter of a triangle is simply the sum of the lengths of its three sides. So in this case, this triangle has a perimeter of 12 units. In this triangle, we also want to find the length of the hypotenuse. So we know that x squared equals 4 squared plus 5 squared. In this case, we're going to get a length of a hypotenuse, which is an irrational number, the square root of 41. We could still find the perimeter of this triangle, but the perimeter being the sum of the lengths of the three sides would be the 4 plus the 5 plus the square root of 41, which is 9 plus the square root of 41 units. Now there's two special right triangles we need to talk about as well. One of them is called a 45-45-90 triangle because it has two 45 degree angles and one 90 degree angle. What makes this special is the relationship between the lengths of the sides. The sides opposite the 45 degree angles will always be the same length, so in this case they're just called x and the hypotenuse in a 45-45-90 triangle will always be the length of those legs, which is x, times the square root of two units long. For example, if we have a 45-45-90 triangle and we know that one of the legs measures seven units, we can find the lengths of the other sides. We know that both legs have to be the same measure so they're both seven units long. And the hypotenuse is that seven times the square root of two units long. Now the other special right triangle is a 30-60-90 right triangle. In a 30-60-90 right triangle, the shortest side is always going to be opposite the 30 degree angle. So in this case, that's a side that's marked x units long the hypotenuse will always be twice as long as the shortest side, so it's 2x, and the other leg that's opposite the 60 degree angle will always be the length of the shortest side times the square root of 3 units long. So in this case, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and the length of the shortest side is 6 units long. The hypotenuse is twice that long, which makes it 12 units long, and the side opposite the 60 degree angle is the length of the shortest side, 6, times the square root of 3 units long. So we'll practice a few problems in class that have to do with triangles and special triangles.